Live from the IRC Television Studios on the SUNY Oneonta campus, this is Oneonta News Now. I'm Joanna Weidenhammer. And I'm Caitlin Horrett. Before we start the news, meteorologist Matthew Miles joins us with a look at the Oneonta weather cam. Thanks, Joanna. Well, we've had a bit of a warm-up the last couple of days. We've seen some more sunny skies. We got to avoid the nor'easter. Um, I'm going to let you guys know how long that's going to last after the break. Awesome. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, so coming up next, we have your campus and local news. Stay tuned to Oneonta News Now. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. In campus news this week, 18 students got hands-on experience with wetlands restoration during a service learning trip in New Orleans' Lower Ninth Ward last week. Working with a nonprofit organization called Common Ground Relief, the students plan planted hardy, fast-growing native plants and removed invasive species in coastal areas um, imperiled by hurricanes. Development and engineering projects that have eroded land and en endangered wildlife, they planted thousands of cypress trees, visited the levee that broke during Hurricane and Katrina and even rescued an abandoned dog that was starving in the wetlands. This experience made the students realize just how important it is for humans to coexist with the environment. For local news, on Thursday, two men accused of cocaine possession with intent to sell were arrested and sent to jail. The two men, John Smith of Oneonta and Dwayne Oates of Schenectady, were both charged with two counts of third-degree criminal possession of a controlled substance and two counts of fourth-degree pos criminal possession of a controlled substance. The two men were arrested after a traffic stop around 11.30 a.m. last Wednesday at the Clarion Hotel. A backpack in the car had a knotted plastic bag that turned out to be two knotted plastic sandwich bags. One bag had about six grams of powder cocaine and the other bag had about seven grams of crack cocaine, according to police. The estimated street value of the drugs was between $1,000 and $3,000. Police also found that the suspects had about $1,300 in cash. Hundreds of area children explored painting with sand, snow, marbles, chalk, and even ultraviolet light at Oneonta World of Learning's Paint Fest, held Saturday at the Fox Care Center in Oneonta. The event, attended by 366 adults and kids, returned after a one-year hiatus. OWL uh, Board President Elaine Mosher Campoli said that after purchasing a brick-and-mortar base in Fortin Park in spring 2017, the group's focus shifted temporarily, but always with plans to reinstate PaintFest. Preparation for the event's return began, she said, last fall. We were in transition and took a year to decide to focus on getting the house ready. But now, with that settled, we had more energy for this, Mosher Campoli said. She said this and the Ice Cream Social are our biggest events and people definitely missed Paint Fest last year. We wanted to bring it back and so far everyone is having a really fun time. Our board member, Aaron Sorensen, added people are excited and clearly they missed it. Sorensen said those attending came from the entire region. On Friday, a 17-year-old was arrested for allegedly making a threat towards the Ostelic Valley School District that day. The suspect was interviewed, then arrested for making a terroristic threat, a Class D felony. The school administration immediately reported the threat to the sheriff's office, and school staff and administration assisted in the investigation. According to a release form from the sheriff's department, the suspect was arranged in Shenango County Court and sent to Shenango County Correctional Facility on no bail, and will reappear in court at a later date. Thanks, Caitlin. We have your local entertainment news when we come back. Stay tuned to Oneonta News Now. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Bye, Only you can prevent wildfires. 
We're back with your local entertainment news update with Natalie Casanza. What's going on this week on campus, Natalie? Well, Joanna and Caitlin, this week you can start a fire, but not on campus. This Monday, March 19th, join the resident student organization as they team up with our University Police Department for an informational session on fire safety. Held in the Hunt Union International Lounge from 7 to 9 p.m., a presentation from Dave Lincoln, emergency manager for SUNY Oneonta, will be leading a 20 minute 20 minute presentation followed by fire safety trivia where students can earn prizes. Informational posters will be made by attendees for the residence halls. Free food and lead credit will also be served. You won't want to miss this hot event on campus. For movies this week, last call pitches. This weekend in the Red Dragon Theater, Pitch Perfect 3 will be shown on Friday, Saturday and Sunday at 6.30 and 9 p.m with a special matinee on Sunday at 1. Come reunite with the a cappella singing Bellas. After the Bellas won the world championship for an a cappella competition earlier in their careers, life has taken them all in numerous directions. Let's see what our favorite singing college a cappella singing ladies will do when they're together one last time for the USO tour. There may be a lot of uncertainties, but one thing is for sure. Laughter, music, and some questionable decisions will be made. Tickets are free for all SUNY Oneonta students with a valid student ID and $3 for all others. Tickets go on sale 30 minutes prior to showtime and free popcorn will be served. Have either of you seen this movie? It was a really good movie. I saw, I saw it too. I saw the yeah. first one, but if they keep making more, like they have to be good. <laughs> it says last call, so we'll see, yeah. but I hear it's pretty good. But going off of that, calling all music fans. Who's ready to get their shamrock on? Music Industry Club will be hosting a St. Patrick's Day themed benefit concert on Thursday, March 15th from 5 p.m. in the Hunt Union Waterfront Room. A $2 donation at the door is asked um, and it goes to the New York Special Olympics. Special Olympics is an international organization that offers opportunities to develop, uh, for people to develop and reach their full potential around athletics and personal fitness. This organization was founded in 1969 and was incorporated to serve New York in 1970. This benefit concert will have cover bands of your favorite artists such as Maroon 5, Fall Out Boy, Mayday Parade, and more. So let's get rocking for a great cause. That's all uh, for your ONN Entertainment News this week. Be sure to attend those great events. Thanks for joining us, Natalie. We have your national news coming up, so stay tuned to ONN. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. For world news, the West Virginia State Senate on Friday unanimously approved cyberbullying legislation that makes it a crime to use a computer to harass or intimidate anyone um, under the age of 18, earning support from both Democrats and Republicans who said they've, um, they've seen victims. Passed by a vote of 33 to 0, Senate Bill 2655 amends the state's anti-hacking law to criminalize a range of specific acts of electronic harassment targeting adolescents, including cyber-stalking and encouraging others to post or uh, disseminate private, personal, or sexual information, among other conduct. The proposal already passed the State House last month by a vote of 94 to 1, and the law will automatically take effect unless vetoed by Republican government, uh, Governor Jim justice before March 19th. If enacted, the bill would make cyberbullying children a misdemeanor offense in West Virginia, punishable by up to a year behind bars and a uh, $500 fine or both. A Western North Carolina police officer resigned after a body camera video shows him and an officer in training using a taser and hitting a man suspected of jaywalking in the early hours of the morning. The senior police officer, Christopher Hickman, was removed from patrol duty after the incident last August and resigned from Asheville Police Department in January. On Thursday, a judge issued a warrant for Hickman's arrest on Thursday. He will now be facing preliminary charges of assault, according to the Buncobie County District Attorney's Office. 
There is no excuse for what happened to Johnny Rush. The police must protect and serve everybody, regardless of race. Instead, a black man gets beaten, tased, and choked over jaywalking. That's right, jaywalking, unquote. <laughs> A waitress at a Waffle House in Lamarck, Texas, was surprised with a scholarship from Texas Southern University after her act of kindness was captured on camera. Uh, Ebony Williams, 18, received praise from all over when she was seen cutting up food for an elderly customer who had recently undergone surgery. The man told Williams that his hands weren't working too good. He was also on oxygen and struggling to breathe. Without hesitation, she took his plate and began cutting his ham. Lamarck, uh, Mayor Bobby Hawking, presented a proclamation to Williams at her Waffle House location. Williams' act also caught the eye of TSU, which surprised her with a scholarship totaling $16,000, which is $4,000 for each of four semesters. Williams said she was working at Waffle House to save up for college. In California, suspect Isaias de Jesus Valencia was charged with murder Saturday after he was arrested following a 15-hour overnight standoff at an apartment complex in Pomona. Officer Gregory Casillas was fatally shot and a second officer was hospitalized in serious condition after being shot in the face while he tried to rescue Casillas. According to authorities, the incident began Friday night when Pomona officers responded to a report of reckless driving. The suspect failed to yield when authorities tried to conduct a traffic stop and a vehicle pursuit ensued. Valencia's vehicle then crashed into a parked car and he fled on foot, leading officers on a pursuit. The suspect then barricaded himself in the bedroom at an apartment complex and began firing through the door. Often hurt after the standoff started, Valencia was led away in his underwear by law enforcement officials. Thanks, Caitlin. When we come back, Matthew Miles will take a look at your five-day weather forecast. Stay with us. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back to Oneonta News Now. Let's find out what the weather has in store for us this week with our meteorologist, Matthew Miles. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, as I was talking about earlier, we've had a bit of a warm up. Not too warm or under average in terms of being in the 30s where we should be at 40s, but we got a nice picture over by uh, Holbert Hall, the sun setting with a clock uh, in the background near physical science. So that's sort of the sun sets. We should be getting the next couple of days as spring is now here. But the temperature wise, it doesn't feel like it. Today we had a high of about 37 degrees, but currently 30 degrees with partly cloudy skies with a wind speed of about 12 miles per hour from the northeast. The nice thing is we have 0% precip, unlike New York City and Long Island right now, which they're looking about a foot of snow into the nighttime as for us. We're looking at about 23 degrees as a low with mostly cloudy uh, skies, which is going to keep us more warm versus a clearer night, which would sort of cool us down with north wind speeds of 9 to 11 miles per hour. As we go into tomorrow, we're at the freezing mark again, 32 degrees as a high because it's going to be mostly cloudy. There's going to be some spotty chances of some sunshine here and there, but nothing to really warm us up. And we have 
a northwest wind of about 13 to 17 miles per hour to keep us really cool. So it's not going to be much of a nice day walking around campus tomorrow, sadly, even though spring is supposed to be here. As we look at our northeast temps, we got Oneonta 32, Albany at 40, Saranac at 33, Watertown at 36. We get down to Binghamton, 36, out to Jamestown in Buffalo, 33 and 36, and down in New York City, about 44, and the island is around 43 degrees for high temps tomorrow. As for tomorrow night, we're looking about a high of, or a low, I should say, of 22 degrees with snow showers possible, about 20%, so nothing crazy. We're not going to get a foot of snow, maybe a dusting to a coating. Uh, with a northwest wind of about 5 to 11 miles per hour. As we look at the five-day outlook, we get a high of 30, 32, 33, 34, and those 30s stay consistent, but we do get a chance of some, a little more sunshine. We get uh, a little chance of snow for Friday night to Saturday, but that is nothing uh, very crazy as well in terms of snow amounts. And then the lows are in the 20s, which is pretty cold for the weekend. But now let's check in with Dustin Pennington outside of our IRC to get our real field forecast for this evening. evening. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy first day of spring. It certainly didn't feel like spring. However, temperatures were only into the mid-30s, about 34 degrees, a little bit above average, but still pretty chilly considering it is the first day of spring. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to be the case for the next couple of days. I'm standing outside. We are still cloudy, and we still got a nice hefty layer of snow on the ground. Thankfully, we are a little bit better off. Cloudy skies compared to what's going on in parts of New York City and Long Island today, where they're getting pummeled by another nor'easter, our fifth for the month of March. Hopefully things will start to wind down and we can start feeling like spring, but unfortunately it's not going to look, it's not going to start feeling like spring until maybe towards the beginning of April. Back to you guys. Thanks Dustin. Well, I'm glad you're not getting blown away out there. That's all for this week. Back to you, Joanna. Thanks Matt and Dustin. Uh, for more world news, a newly installed bridge on the campus of Florida International University collapsed on Thursday, March 15th, killing six people and hospitalizing several others. All six victims have been identified as Oswald Gonzalez, uh, 57, Alberto Arias, 53, Rolando Frega, Hernandez, 60, Navarro Brown, 37, student Alexa Duran, 18, and Brandon Brownfield, whose age has not been released. While the cause of the bridge collapse has not been identified, about three hours before the collapse, engineers and state and university officials had met about a crack in the structure. The university later released in a statement that uh, the crack had not been a safety concern and did not compromise the structural integrity of the bridge. According to an engineer from the private contractor for the or, uh, overall bridge design, the bridge over one of the busiest roads in South Florida was de designed to withstand a Category 5 hurricane and last 100 years according to the university. On Wednesday, March 14th, students across the country participated in walkouts for gun control. High school students left school by the hundreds and thousands at 10 a.m., some in defiance of school officials. The walkouts generally lasted for about 17 minutes, one for each of the Parkland school shooting victims. Students made signs, wore orange, and chanted in protest of the current gun laws in the U.S. Thousands of New York City students converged on central locations, Columbus Circle, Battery Park, Lincoln Center, and outside the Trump Tower across Broadway. Washington, D.C. students marched towards the Capitol steps, where they were met by some Democratic members of Congress who had emerged from the Capitol building to meet and support them. Snapchat stories of high school walkouts also dominated snap maps throughout the day. Two more nationwide protests are set to take place on March 24th and April 20th, the anniversary of the Columbine High School shooting, where 13 people were killed in 1999. There have been four explosions in Austin, Texas this month that have killed two people and injured four more. The bombings have been spread out throughout the month and police are still investigating if the explosions are connected. The first explosion occurred on March 2nd, killing 39-year-old Anthony Stephen house when he picked up a package from his front porch in northeast Austin. The second bomb went off on March 12th inside a home in East Austin where Draylen Mason, 17, was killed and his mother hospitalized. The third blast
arrest came a short time later in a neighborhood south of downtown. A 75-year-old Hispanic woman was seriously injured when she, too, picked up a package from her front porch. The most recent blast was possibly set off by a trip wire and injured two men in southwest Austin. Austin. Police have reason to believe all the attacks are connected. Despite the most recent explosion not repeating the past attacks pattern uh, of mysterious exploding packages. United Airlines is under fire again after its third dog-related mishap this week. On Monday, March 12th, a passenger's dog died while on a three-and-a-half-hour flight from Houston to New York after a flight attendant told the passenger to put the dog in the overhead bin for the duration of the flight. Despite the dog meeting all of United's pet policy guidelines, the next day, United wrongly shipped a Kansas-bound pet dog to, ja to Japan. The 10-year-old German Shepherd, Irgo, had no food or water on the 16-plus hours flight to Japan and missed his ear infection medication for three days. On Thursday, March 15th, a United flight from Newark, New Jersey to St. Louis, Missouri was diverted due to the presence of a dog that should have been onto a different flight from Arcon, Ohio. United is no stranger to animal issues on its flight. The Department of Transportation reporting that United has the highest number of animal deaths of any U.S. carrier, a rate of 2.24 per 10,000 transported animals. Actress Cynthia Nixon announced her campaign for governor of New York on Twitter on Monday, challenging Governor Andrew M. Cuomo in this Cuomo, excuse me, in this year's Democratic primary. Nixon, 51, has never before run for elected office. She said in a video posted on Twitter, "Our leaders are letting us down. Something has to change. We want our government to work again on health care, uh, ending mass incarceration, fixing our broken subway. We are sick of politicians who care more about." about headlines and power than they do about US about the US it can't just be business as usual anymore if elected Nixon would become the first female governor in New York history she would also be the state's first openly gay governor thanks Joanna stay tuned to ONN for your weekly sports update with Austin title bomb well Thomas you've got pre-diabetes but with more exercise and a change in diet it can be reversed I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Welcome back to Oneonta News Now. Hey Austin, so what's going on in sports this week? Well, Caitlin and Joe, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to sports, so let's get right to it. In Red Dragon News, men's lacrosse handles Elmira 9-2. The SUNY Oneonta men's lacrosse team put together a five-goal second period to pace themselves to a 9-2 victory today against Elmira College. The Red Dragons held a tremendous advantage in the shots while forcing 26 turnovers en route to its third win of the season. Oneonta will remain at home this, week, this Wednesday when they host nationally ranked Ithaca College on the Red Dragon field beginning at 4. How do you guys feel about this? Oh. this is pretty. This We're is doing pretty. really well. This is All awesome. about the Red Dragon pride. Yes, here we go lacrosse. About it. All right, let's get into my next story. Right here. Here let's get my go. next story. Uh, for your sports news, Alex Cobb agrees with Orioles on a four-year deal near $60 million. Veteran starter Alex Cobb has agreed with the Baltimore Orioles in a four-year contract. Team announced Wednesday, the 30-year-old right-hander Posted career high for, for wins, game started and innings pitched while going 12 and 10 with a three with a 3.66 ERA over 29 starts with the Tampa Bay Rays in 2017. Cobb's career year for the Rays marked his comeback from Tommy John surgery, which sidelined him for most of the previous two seasons. Cobb went one for two with a 8.59 ERA in 2016 after after returning late that season from the from legitimate for ligament replacement procedure. The deal with the Baltimore Orioles is the largest the Orioles have committed to a free agent pitcher by total value and average annual value. UMBC delivers historic upset over number one Virginia. Virginia was on the wrong end of the, of the most improbable upset in men's college basketball history Friday night, failing to the, the Maryland Baltimore County 74 to 54 to become the first number one seed to lose to number 16 in the NCAA tournament. Number 16 seeds have lost their previous 135 games to number, uh, number one seeds since the tournament expanded to 64 teams in 1985. UMBC never trailed after intermission and advanced the Sunday's round of 32 to face number nine Kansas State 
The Retrievers made 12 of 24 three-pointers and handled the Cavaliers' vaunted pack line defense with a 54.2% with a shooting overall. Gerard Lyle said, quote, we talked about it before the game, to go out there and try to make history, end quote. Can't wait to see what will happen next. Thanks, Austin. Join us again next time for your up-to-date news, entertainment, sports, weather, and more. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joanna Weidenhammer. This is Oneonta News Now. Have a great night.